Hey everyone and welcome to a new XIM tutorial. Today I want to show you a new config tutorial. But since I don't have a lot of free time right now, I will once again have to use an artificial voice. So definitely let me know how you like the voice or if I should do some adjustments to it. So today, I will tell you everything you need to know about creating a Halo Infinite configuration. Next to that, I will cover the different in-game settings that you can use to get the best turning behavior in Halo. I will also address the scope sensitivity values and to which weapons they apply to. In addition to that I will give you recommendations on how you can tweak the aim assist bubble around enemies and how to set up a jump button with which you will always do a crouch jump. That way you will be harder to hit while you jump. At last, I will walk you through the setup steps to realize a very fast teabagging trick. In my opinion Halo is not Halo without teabagging. Since we have a lot to cover, let's directly jump into the first topic of this video. Near the bottom of your configuration picture you can find a small wrench button. Click it, and you will be asked about the required in-game settings. These are the settings your Zim expects you to use. Once they have loaded, you can see that there are quite a lot of things you have to adjust. The most important setting here is the look acceleration. The Zim forum recommends a value of 1. This will result in the best possible mouse movements. But the downside is that it takes quite a while to reach the maximum turn speed. What you can do instead is to use an acceleration value of 5. That way you will reach the maximum turn speed a lot faster, so turning becomes less of an issue. This comes at the cost of accuracy though. Your mouse movements will not be as precise anymore as with acceleration set to 1. Especially micro movements feel boosted and off. Personally, I would recommend to use a value of 1. The second setting you should take a closer look at is the scope sensitivity. If you want the same sensitivity per pixel across all scopes, then use the recommended value of 1 for all of them. But if you prefer a unified sensitivity, then you will have to use custom values for each scope. Here you can see a post on which scope magnification belongs to which weapon in the game. Since I prefer all scopes to cover the same amount of pixels per fixed distance on the mousepad, I will go with 1 for all scopes. So go into your Halo settings now, and adjust all options until they match the values from the Zim forum. You can later still change the scope sensitivities if you aren't sure yet what to use there. After that, you can take care of the polling rate. Head into the global settings of your Zim manager. Your polling rate for this configuration should be set to either 500 or 1000 Hz. Use the polling rate that your mouse performs best with. If you are not sure which polling rate is the best for your mouse, then quickly do a polling rate benchmark, such as the Zawi mouse rate checker. If you don't want to do this, then choose the 500 Hz option. The reason is that pretty much all modern gaming mice perform well on 500 Hz. My mouse provides excellent results on 1000 Hz, so I can go with that polling rate. Also, if you want a little bit more aim assist, then choose the 500 Hz option. Once you completed your polling rate changes, press the save button in the bottom right and restart your Zim Apex. Otherwise your polling rate changes won't become active. Next I will show you how to set up the HIP and ADS configuration for Halo Infinite. The setup values are the same for Xbox One, Xbox Series X, or S. So pick the corresponding configuration that matches your console. Start by clicking on the edit button in the top left corner. For the configuration color I have decided to use green, and my hotkey is the F1 key. That way I can load my Halo configuration whenever I want to, by pressing the F1 key on my keyboard. As a confirmation, my Zim will then show a green LED light. Now let's swipe one more time to the right to enter the HIP menu. As always, adjust your synchronization settings first. I did quite a lot of tests, and in my opinion, Sync Off performs the best in Halo Infinite. It provides the most responsive mouse movements, and also reduces the aim assist around the target in a very nice way. It will not decrease the aim assist when the crosshair is on the target. All it does is to reduce the slowdown that occurs in the near proximity of the target which is often referred to as the aim assist bubble. This greatly helps with building up muscle memory, as well as performing precise and fast mouse flicks. Also, Sync Off performs just as well when playing on 60 frames per second as it does on 120 frames per second. 
After that, adjust your hip sensitivity. I will use a sensitivity of 45, with a mouse DPI value of 3200. As for the sensitivity, this is the only value in the video that you should not copy. Instead, I recommend you to use your own favorite mouse sensitivity. If you are not sure what sensitivity value works best for you, then you can watch my ultimate mouse sensitivity guide. It will show you a method which pro players use to find their most optimal sensitivity. With that one you will have the highest accuracy. As for the other sensitivity options, these will mainly change the aim assist. If you want a little bit more aim assist, then set the smoothing value to 3, and the steady aim feature to 2. Smoothing will increase the aim assist, and steady aim will further reduce the bubble around the target. Personally, I like the aim assist as it is, so I will set both values to 0 again. I would recommend you to try these two settings, if the aim assist is not on your preferred level yet. The boost feature can also be helpful. If you are playing the 60 frames per second version of Halo, then a boost value of 150 can make the crosshair a little bit more responsive and snappy. If you use the 120 frames per second version, then this isn't really needed though, because mouse movements are significantly more responsive. Since this is the version I am using, I will set my boost value to zero again. Next, let's go over the SAB feature. Scroll down to the movement section and expand the advanced settings. Compared to most other multiplayer games, the typical combat time during one versus one fights in Halo Infinite is rather long. This means that movement is much more important during these encounters than in other shooters. Because the strafe speed and general character acceleration of the Master Chief are rather slow, we will use SAB off for Halo. This will increase the strafe speed of the Master Chief, which allows you to be more mobile in one versus one situations. Since the strafe speed will still be rather slow compared to other games, we do not have to fear any negative consequences in regard to the aim assist. Now scroll down until you can see the button bindings. Here you can either copy my button layout that you can see right now, or you go with your own one. At the very bottom of your button bindings, you can find the option to switch into the secondary button bindings. Here you can bind every controller action a second time. Now swipe one more time to the right to enter the ADS configuration. Halo Infinite doesn't have a dedicated aim mechanic for the aim down sights mode. Because of that, your Zim doesn't show you an ADS configuration. Since we want to perfectly optimize our aim down sights gameplay, we will ignore this fact and create our own aim down sights configuration. So activate this sub configuration by ticking the box at the top. Just like before, adjust your Zim synchronization settings first. To maintain the same mouse feeling, I recommend to use the same synchronization settings as in your hip configuration. So I will go with sync off again. After that, adjust your aim down sight sensitivity. My preferred aim down sight sensitivity for Halo is 30. Next you have the option to customize the aim assist. Since the hip and ADS mechanic of Halo are identical, the same values as in the hip configuration can be used here. So if you want more aim assist, then set the smoothing to 3 and the steady aim value to 2. Personally, I do not want to customize the aim assist any further. Because of that, I will set both values to 0 again. The same applies to boost. If you play on 60 frames per second then you can raise it to 150. Since I use 120 frames per second I can keep the value at 0. As for the SAB value, I recommend to use the same one as in the hip configuration. This is automatically done by the Zim when the inherit box at the top is active. So in that regard, we don't have to change anything. Your hip and ADS settings are now complete. Next I will explain you how to set up a sub configuration, which allows you to perform a perfect crouch jump. You will automatically crouch while jumping to become a smaller target in the game. This is a fairly common tactic among good Halo players. First you will have to swipe back into your hip configuration. In the secondary bindings, you will now have to assign a random key to the jump button. The reason behind this is that your normal jump button will not really work in the game menu anymore. So you will need a second button with which you can navigate the menu. Alternatively, you can of course just use your controller. In that case, you can skip this step. I will bind the jump action to the right alt key. 
After that, scroll down and switch into the primary button bindings. As you can see, I bound the jump action to the spacebar. This will now be the button that I have to use for this crouch jumping trick. So swipe two times to the right to enter a new sub configuration. Activate it at the top and then bind your normal jump button as an activation key. For me this is the spacebar key. Next you have to activate the advanced settings right below. Set the delay value to 100 milliseconds. Once that is done, you can scroll down to the sensitivity settings. Change all values here until they match your hip settings. My hip sensitivity is 45 and my synchronization is off. If you decided to use boost, smoothing or steady aim in your hip configuration, then adjust those values here too. I do not use any of these values, so I can keep them all at zero. At last you have to untick the inherit box at the top. You can now scroll down to the button bindings. In the primary bindings, you will now have to bind your jump button to the crouch action. So I will have to bind the spacebar to this action. That is already it. When you now hold down your jump button, your character in the game will automatically perform a crouch jump. And when you just briefly tap the jump button then you will perform a normal jump without crouching. You will barely notice a difference on your screen, but for your enemy, you will be a much smaller target. We also solved the following problem. When you hold down your jump key for more than 100 milliseconds, your Zim will send both, jump and crouch at the same time to the console. Because of that, some menu options can no longer be confirmed with this key. This is why we bound a second jump button in the hip configuration. With that key you can confirm the different menu selections. Alternatively, just use the controller in the menu. In the next topic I will show you how to set up a rapid teabagging trick for Halo. First, you have to go back to your console. In the controller settings of Halo, you will have to activate the hold to crouch option. This change is mandatory or else the trick will not work. After that, switch back to your Zim Manager. Start by swiping into a new sub configuration and activate it. This trick works best with the scroll up or scroll down action of your mouse. So verify that you haven't bound one of them in any of the previous sub configurations. If you did, then remove one of those two now and bind the corresponding action to a different button or key. I will use the scroll down button of my mouse. What I have to do now is to bind that key as the activation button. Next you have to change the sensitivity options so that they match your hip settings. My hip sensitivity is 45 and my synchronization is off. As for all the advanced settings such as steady aim or smoothing, none of these are part of my hip configuration. If you use those, then add them here now. Once your settings are identical, you can untick the inherit box at the very top. Scroll down to the button bindings and switch into the secondary button bindings. You will now have to bind your activation key to the crouch action. So I will have to use the scroll down button again. After that, you can switch into a new sub configuration and activate it. Bind your teabagging key as an activation button again. Once that is done, expand the advanced settings under the activation key. Set the delay value at the top to 20 milliseconds. The next step is about the sensitivity options again. Change those so that they match your hip settings. All I have to do here is to set my sensitivity to 45 and the synchronization to off. Don't forget your boost, steady aim or smoothing values if you decided to use those. That is already it for this sub configuration. Next switch into a new one again and activate it at the very top. Just like before, bind your teabagging key as an activation key. After that, expand the advanced settings and set the delay value to 40 milliseconds. Next you have to change the sensitivity settings again. So once more I will set my sensitivity value to 45 and the synchronization to off. Don't forget your boost, steady aim or smoothing values if you use those in your hip configuration. At last, you have to untick the inherit box at the top again and scroll down to the button bindings. Switch into the secondary button bindings. Bind the activation key to the crouch action again. That was the last adjustment, you can now press the save button in the top left and exit this configuration. The way the teabagging trick will work now is the following. 
When you are in the game and you want to teabag an enemy, you just use your corresponding activation key to perform a teabag. If you bound it to the scroll up or down action of your mouse, then you can continuously teabag for as long as you move the wheel of your mouse. You can even walk into any direction while doing this. The Zim will allow you to crouch spam at a very fast and consistent rate. As always, you can find the copy and paste code for this configuration in the video description. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button or maybe even subscribe to this channel to not miss out on any of the upcoming videos. Also, contrary to popular belief, this channel is not an official Zim channel. I run this channel in my free time to bring you guys the latest Zim news and tricks. So if you want to support what I do, then maybe consider to join the YouTube channel membership. Channel members usually get around 1-4 to four weeks of early access to all new videos. Plus, we also have a nice little Discord to discuss Zim settings and other stuff. But that's about it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching and I will maybe see you in the next one.